Okay. The next, I'm going to just peek real quick if there's any questions. Uh, there's one in the chat real quick. What is the key to give the handoff? Um, if it's a think throw RPO, the key to give the handoff is going to be a picture where he goes, I'm just not going to be able to throw the ball. Okay. And so it would be the same key he has to decide if he's throwing to the bang eight or if he's throwing to the, the dump route. Okay. Um, that one is a lot more play action oriented. And so he would have to say to himself, I'm only going to give this ball if I don't, if I can't figure out what the stimulus is going to do. Okay, David, I don't know if that answers your question or not, but uh, that's what we would tell him. Okay. Second level linebacker conflicts. Um, this is, these are some of the most common ones we do. We have slant variations. Okay. So now uh, earlier I showed you the bang eight where it was five steps and you're looking at that safety. Now we're running just a slant and our movement key is that backside backer. So it happens quicker. The mesh is going to be faster. What the quarterback has to do on some of these single receiver slants. And again, this is, this is married with, with a gap scheme with power. Uh, this is his stimulus. This is his response. The quarterback is in essence before the, before, again, we're, we're always careful of how many pre-snap variables he has, but he's going to decide right now before the ball is snapped, if he needs to worry about that guy or not, if he has to worry about him, then he forgets it. And we're, we're handing the ball off because we're not going to have to worry about reading two people when the ball is actually snapped. Um, so that linebacker is his stimulus response. You can see the linebacker step up and pull with the puller. Okay. And then we have the backside slant. If you're getting a lot of press coverage, it's easier to get your kids to run slants than they are bang eights. So you would probably prefer that um, against that kind of coverage. Um, and again, that's just, you know, 21 personnel power right there. And this is a good picture of what you have to make sure your backside tackle understands that we're throwing an RPO. So he can't just do a regular seal hinge technique. He has to be able to protect the quarterback a little bit more than he would if it was just a normal, you know, gap scheme. Okay, here's an outside zone scheme. Again, there's the quarterback stimulus. There's the quarterback's response. He's going to eliminate that guy pre-snap. He is counting on the receiver to win versus press coverage. Do we have snaps? And there's not very many guys, but it does. Where the quarterback gets a read to keep the ball and throw it, and this guy's not winning, it does. Okay, if that's the case, you know, we just simply, hey, make a player throw it away. And so he needs to kind of get in a oh shit mode and take off running to get us, our, you know, our four yards out of the play. It doesn't happen very much, but that's what that's what we coach him to do if he gets handcuffed and that receiver doesn't win. Okay, again, here's the stimulus, here's his response. Okay, you can see in that picture how it looks. Okay, the safety's obviously out of the picture. He's gone right. He's 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 cheated down in the box, and the quarterback's response. Uh, to his stimulus, that guy's just chasing with it. But you talk about throwing lanes, fellas, and windows to be able to, and we're marrying it with an outside zone play here. There's a ton of distortion. The quarterback is responsible for his read key. So in some situations, that guy might time a blitz up. He might come up right on the line. Whatever it is, he's responsible to control him. So you need to either ride a little longer or disconnect it. You might even have to keep it and run, but he's responsible to control that guy. And this one, he, the linebacker times up a blitz pretty decent. You can see and chase it, but that's the quarterback's guy to, to control. And you have to be able to do it with good meshes. And, guys, we, we, we practice these things all the time. So, um, you know, we have a kind of a saying where we talk about, you know, you need to remember your training and train your kids at the mundane skills and tasks. Uh, you, you know, here's a picture of us running a little center pole scheme. You know, we're man blocking the backside. The quarterback knows that's his guy to read. And he's going to eliminate him before the ball snapped, which he does. Okay. And there was a picture in that from the wide of that guy running a good slant versus press coverage. Uh, here's another example of how, guys, we will put it together, just formation variance, personnel variance. There's his stimulus. There's his response. Now, here's the thing. On this play, when you have guys, and this happens a lot. Now, this is some of the things that people do to take away RPOs. They roll the post safety coverages and they add an extra guy back there in the alley. So you're going to see this guy kind of roll down the picture, which was uh, totally something, you know, through game planning that we knew that we were, they were going to line up in or get to. The quarterback's not worried about that guy, okay? He's worried about his movement key. We have a flat and a slant concept built on the backside now. So the flat guy is going to control him. The quarterback doesn't need to worry about him. Obviously, he's going to snap his eyes to him just to make sure that he's not cheating or falls back on the slant. Um, but that's the guy who's going to indicate for him to throw the ball or not, or to keep it from the running back. Okay. So you can see right there in the picture, 
the flat's going to control that guy out there, which happens almost all the time. Okay. And then we get the ball thrown to our slant route behind it. Um, this is a good picture from the Y. Again, we're running our outside zone scheme. Got his eyes in the backside backer. Guy runs. Got the slant window. Okay. Again, talk about throwing windows, fellows, and be able to throw the ball quick. Um, that's what we're looking for. Here's the stimulus, guys, where we're, we're giving it. Okay. Here's his read key. Here's his stimulus. Okay. Guys sitting on the backside. Guys out there in the alley. Okay. Just give the ball. Hand it off. See number eight back there? Give the ball. Hand it off. Run the run play. Live with it. Okay. One stimulus, one response. Okay. Now be prepared for this kind of stuff, guys. When you get into it, and sometimes you practice it and you're doing it, you're going to see snaps where the quarterback keeps the throw it, and you're going to go, oh, if he just gave the ball to the back, look at that big old hole he's going to have. Listen, just train him to trust his reads. Okay. That's the way it looks. It always looks that way. Okay. When you hand the ball off, then you look and go, oh, God, look at that slant. It's wide open. Just keep training it, keep doing it, keep letting him read it because he's going to see it. Here's a couple of variations as well. Same read, same as teaching. That's where the quarterback stimulus response is. This is the guy running the slant. These two guys are running hitches. Everyone else is running outside zone. Okay, that's where the quarterback's eyes are. Okay, if that guy chases on the outside zone, obviously by his alignment before the ball snap, he's thinking, I'm going to give the ball because this is one of those boxes I talked about before, guys, that, listen, if you're not running the ball against that for some efficiency, it's just going to be a long Saturday. That's just the way it is. Okay. So you can see in this picture that backer stays backside. It's taking away that slant, and he has to get in the box and make a fit for an inefficient play, which he's not doing, which he can't do. Okay? So we talk about same as teaching for the quarterback. That look, that picture, that's no different than when it's a single receiver slant. Okay? Or when it's that bang eight or whatever it is, he's got one stimulus, one response. He's just, we're going to train him and so he can just trust his training as, as we go. Okay? All right, uh, the double slants on the backside. Again, fellas, stimulus response. If that guy chases the run, he's counting on his receiver to win that slant. If for some reason that guy's covered or, or he, you know, whatever, he tripped, that's kind of his, you know, his oh shit throw right there for him. I'm trying to move along fast enough here, fellas, to get to some of the other variations, okay? I'll keep going. Uh, here it is. Here's the stimulus where we're going to give the ball now. Okay, you can see the guy hanging out out there in the alley. OK, you can see uh, that hit that he doesn't need to be able to. Um, you know, he doesn't have a throw. So for him to be able to just hand it off and, and get, get out of it. Right. For an efficient run play. That's what we're looking for. I'll keep moving here and see if I can't find a couple other variations. Here's another one, guys, as, as we're running the play, they're giving you one of those goofy looks where the safety comes down before the ball snapped. There's pre snaps. It's not forget. It. I'm just going to hand it off. OK, and you make those guys in the backside fit to make tackles for inefficient play. That's what you're trying to make have happen. You can, you know, combine it with tempo. 